We called it The Traveller, and its arrival changed us forever. Great cities were built on Mars and Venus. Mercury became a garden world. Human lifespan tripled. It was a time of miracles. We stared out at the galaxy and knew that it was our destiny to walk in the light of other stars. But the Traveler had an enemy, a darkness which had hunted it for eons across the black gulfs of space. Centuries after our golden age began, this darkness found us. And that was the end of everything. But it was also a beginning. Simon, what's the one thing we always say about Bungie? We've, all, we've said it every time there's a Halo game come out that they made, and it's that they f- always fuck up at least <laughs> one thing. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's happened every time, but they do so much else right that we tend to, I don't know, look back at things and, and forget the one fuck up each time, but we're sitting in the present now and we can blatantly see it. This is the biggest fuck up, man. <laughs> this is the biggest fuck up since Halo Two, and Halo Two was probably a more complete package. That's how big this fuck up is. They, they in Halo Two, they fucked up the end. Well, they fucked up the whole the campaign. Do, yeah, do you not remember yeah, the right. story? Do, do you not remember the story? Uh, it kind of came out when Halo Three came out, and the, if you got the the special edition, you got a documentary, and they basically admitted to fucking up the campaign they split into 10 teams and give each team a level to design and when they put them all together there just no there was no flow and they scrapped <laughs> the whole game six months or a year before release and you know what i can't help but feel something's happened with destiny like that along the way <laughs> I, I just feel that this time though instead of scrapping everything starting again they kept everything and just stripped away everything that ties things together yeah, oh god. So after a what after like two, three years worth of hype, um, you know, Bungie kind of buddying up with Sony to say, you know, we're not with Microsoft anymore. This is a new generation. Destiny's a new franchise. Hyping it up endlessly, joining with Activision. Rumors circulating of a of a five hundred million, a half a billion dollars budget for the, this ten year franchise. Um, you know, been in, in the works since in since uh, ODST came out, what, in 2008 yeah. or some shit? Must be. Um, maybe before, I'm not sure, I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, and this is not the game we <laughs> necessarily promised. This isn't to say that I haven't had fun playing it, but it's not the game that I thought we were going to get. No, and Cash, you, uh, you've joined the next generation with Destiny. I have. Uh, I uh, thought I'd um, break into it with uh, the Destiny bundle, uh, which my wife kindly paid uh, some <laughs> compensation towards. Uh, got the bundle, Did got you the get game. The white one? Uh, no, I didn't. I, um, I unfortunately I couldn't choose which one I wanted. I was just told I was getting a PlayStation. So, all oh, right, kind of the end of it, yeah. <laughs> you get what you're given, and you will yep, like it. Pretty much, that's the way it is. Um, and yeah, got Destiny. Um, didn't really get into the hype as many people did. Uh, I didn't get it on the actual release day. I think I got it about four or five days afterwards. But the general yeah. kind of feeling was uh, a couple of days afterwards, at least two of my friends that got the game on release day uh, took it back. They just said it just wasn't what they were kind of promised. Yeah, and I, I, I would agree, to be honest. Um, th- uh, you said it before, though, Simon. That's not to say I'm not having fun with Destiny, but it's uh, it's such a fucking weird... Um, it's a really weird one to, uh, to, to kind of review, come back and review, because I've got very mixed feelings, probably more so than any game we've ever reviewed before. I, it's I, not even I, mixed. It's almost like completely contrasting opinions. <laughs> it's, it's very fucking strange, and I'm going to have a hard time slapping a rating on this. Uh, yeah. at the end but let's not jump ahead of ourselves just to kind of fill the listeners the many many listeners in Destiny is a first person shooter RPG MMO, MMO. style <laughs> hybrid it's it's what Bungie are, uh, are labelling as a shared world shooter it shares aspects in common with something like Guild Wars or, the, or, or Guild Wars 2 even where um, you're essentially instanced when you're in your own missions except you're your immediate party. But when you're in the overworld, walking around and exploring, you can bump into other players and, and interact with them. 
and there's a lot of RPG elements. There's uh, there's three different classes. There's the Titan, who's the heavily armored, more tanky class. There's the Warlock, who's essentially the space wizard spellcaster, and then there's the Hunter, who's kind of like the I don't know the Hunter or the Rogue type yeah. more that that you see in World of Warcraft and the like. And um, there, there's gear, and there's leveling up, and there's raids and and dungeons, which are called strikes. And there's a lot of MMO. So for anyone who's played either a first-person shooter or an MMO or both, there's kind of a lot of aspects shared between the two. And it creates something kind of unique, really. There's nothing quite like this that comes to mind out there, which is why it's a shame that it stumbles on so many of the finer points of its formula. <laughs> um, it, 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 yeah. So just, I mean, that, that's what type of game it is. The, there is a story, apparently. <laughs> and uh, the not going to be a very long uh, review this year and go into the story. Is it? <laughs> well, the, the opening, the opening cutscene kind of does set the scene quite well. I thought in a, in a yeah. very it, it shows kind of like uh, not far from current day, these three astronauts going getting deployed to, to Mars to explore to to kind of go and see what this mysterious object that's appeared on Mars is. And when they get there, it's this giant orb, and this this orb is essentially known as the Traveller. And it's a like intergalactic being that brings about a golden age of humanity. Humans start living hundreds of years. There's no war or famine. We, we terraform Venus into a garden world and Mercury as well. Uh, we populate Mars with bases. Uh, it's, it's like nothing humanity's ever seen. We kind of progress to the next stage of humanity. Um, and a kind of subdivision of humans come about called the Awoken. And uh, these robots, these kind of um, fully conscious robots get developed called the exo and it's a it's a complete golden age of humanity until the the traveler's mortal enemy that pursues it across the galaxy the darkness turns up and we're never told what the darkness is but essentially for all intents and purposes it's a kind of elemental force of evil and the the, tra- the the story kind of outlines it that the traveler managed to keep it at bay but it, it, in doing so it sacrifices its own life and, and kind of goes into a coma and the, the story picks up a couple of hundred years later where we're guardians who essentially are resurrected fallen warriors who are, who are resurrected by these little, uh, these little robots called ghosts which the Traveller created and it's for dying breath. And we go around and try to keep the darkness at bay while the Traveller is, is essentially resting before it can come back. Does that sound about right? <laughs> yeah. Sounds, sounds pretty spot on. I have to say, for an initial kind of intro, it, 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 it had me gripped. I mean, I like yeah. the kind of cinematic going to Mars... And then the voiceover explaining, um, you know, the, how the darkness came and, and the golden age of humanity. The, uh, I, I thought it was actually really good. I thought it was, it yeah. was quite a pertinent um, kind of intro. And then the game starts, uh, and it looks pretty good. The, the kind of cinematic is pretty. The um, actual game graphics look pretty as you kind of get resurrected and you start off. Uh, and then you begin, and it just kind of... It fizzles out very, very quickly. I was going to say, you, that's the peak pretty much today. Yeah. Yeah. The peak I, haven't, the I haven't hit that peak yet. Said. I've come very close on a number of occasions, but I haven't hit that peak quite as much yet. Well, it was kind of like after the initial thing, it's like, fuck, man, this is like, this is a really cool universe. It's, 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 like, it's not science fiction, it's science fantasy, and you don't really see that very often. And no, it's, no. it's done. Especially not mainstream. Exactly, and it's, it feels like it's done, at least it sets the scene very well, and I was really excited to like see what was going to happen. And uh, yeah, it's pretty much straight away, it just fizzles out. And what's even better is the, uh, the, the narrator is uh, Bill Nye. Bill Nye, the science guy. Uh, well, no, no, the other one. <laughs> oh, the, the other one, sorry. The other, the other Bill Nye. Good, hey, the uh, big vampire lord from Underworld. Like yeah, that. David yeah. Jones and uh, the rock star from Love Actually, among other yes. things. Um, oh, he gets about, he gets about. <laughs> I think he was resurrected. Like, do you think that actually is Bill Nye as the speaker? Um, well, from the um, the movie Love Actually. <laughs> well, I was <laughs> the I same in character. general, like, Bill Nye dies in our timeline and then he gets resurrected thousands of years later into the game. Well, oh, hey. I see, like, that, like Peter Dinklage thought, yeah, if there's one person I could bring back from the past on my time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're doing that, yeah. and that, you know what? I'm part of the fantasy. Yeah, I'm up for that. Up well, you for know that. what? If we if that was part of the story, we'd certainly have more plot to go on than we do <laughs> in the game as it stands. And it, yeah, I mean, you pointed out Peter Dinklage uh, of Game of Thrones fame, among other things. He he voices the the ghost, the little kind of robotic companion you have. He essentially yep. is your Cortana in Destiny. Yeah. He's your little AI companion. Um, 
And he's been getting a lot of shit online for like having a crap voice acting. I don't think he's that bad. I think people are starting to do that <laughs> thing where they just latch onto everything he says and just it, says it's shit just because it's the cool thing to say on the internet. I think I think it's not a problem with Peter Dinklage himself. I think it's a problem with the writing and the dialogue. Yeah. Some of the writing. I don't even think it's a problem with the writing and the dialogue of his lines. The problem is that he's a it is a bland character that he's doing, but he is a robot. So I don't think it's him or the lines. I think it's the fact that He's literally the only person that talks to you in the whole game. Yeah, he, all he does like... is hover, <laughs> fly around you, shouting exposition, just because yeah. there's nothing else going on. Like, your character barely speaks in cutscenes, let alone in-game. He's just there to kind of tell you what's going on. Uh, like... And thank, thank fuck for that, because nothing else tells yeah. you. If there was more going on, I think his voice would be sort of... It would shift to the background a bit, and then it would fit in perfectly. Even the dialogue would. But the fact that he's the forefront of the story... I think he's just taken the flak. Yeah, and you know what? It's it feels like they didn't know whether they wanted to create like this robotic companion that isn't human at all and just kind of you know is a machine. But then, like about halfway through the game, he starts he starts saying things that are like a bit more like, a bit more humor to them and a bit more personality to them. And you think, well, that kind of goes against what we've been seeing so far. I'm not really sure what's <laughs> yeah. going on with him. Um, I mean, there's a bit where you meet another character who calls him Little Light, and then you say it to him mockingly, and he's like, oh, don't do that, don't call me that. And I was like, oh, fucking hell, finally some, some personality. <laughs> uh, but, that, you know, that, that then pretty much no, no cutscenes happen for the rest of the game. I just, yep. That character that you're referring to, I love it when you, you turn up and you're like, oh, things are going places, and this character like, literally says, like, I don't have time to tell you what's going on. Just do this. And she then she leaves. Oh, and like, what, what is it? I don't have time to t- uh, explain why I don't have time to explain. Yeah. <laughs> so why the fuck did you call me here then? <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. It's like, it's, it's almost a, a metaphor for the whole game. They don't have time to tell you anything. They just well, want well, you to kind of get on and get on with it. And it's just yeah. like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, one thing that people have been latching on as well is when you first start the game, one of the first missions is you meet the the speaker, who is essentially the the human representative of the traveller in in modern in, in the current timeline, and uh, he he says like uh, something like I I could tell you of the of the history of the guardians and I could tell you of the great battle that ended with the traveller's demise, but I'm not going to. <laughs> and like a lot of people are latching onto that saying it's terrible. I don't think that's too bad because it, in an indirect way he does kind of tell you what's happened. He's just yeah. by telling you, he's not going to tell you about it. And he does, and he is the same character. It's Bill Nye again. It's the character who um, does the intro. So I think between that, you kind of get an idea of what's going on. But the story then never moves anywhere. I mean, you've got this this this, gal- like this solar system spanning story with multiple alien factions who all have their own motivations and um, and goals. But they're never really explained or given much fanfare. I think the people who get the most introduction are probably, first of all, the Fallen, who are this kind of race of, I don't know, they've been described as space pirates. Um, and I suppose they kind of are. They're, yeah. like, they're like weird, like, um, they're like a race they're who's like fallen into the disgrace. Yeah, they're right well, they're like, they're like the vanilla enemy, basically. They're, they're a race of, of space-faring pirates who's... who's civilization has fallen in, 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 in ill repair or whatever and they now scour the galaxy scavenging and they kind of have this like semi-religious aspect to them where they worship these these robot orb things called servitors and uh they're, they're all broken into like houses like game of thrones style houses so you've got like the the house of exiles and the house of kings and they all wear different color schemes and there's a lot going on in the background. It just this yeah. is not explained in game. You've got to dig for this information. You have to dig in the form of um, grimoire cards. Yeah. Uh, that you can access via the wonderful Destiny app if you choose to download it on your iOS or Android device, well, or if you have access to an internet browser. Well, that's the thing. There's no story whatsoever, no background on any of these really well developed factions and races, and you've got to go outside of the game and read fucking trading cards. It's just it just defies logic. You think they spent so much time hyping the game and its lore and its story and what you're going to be doing and how you're going to fit into it. I mean, it's called fucking destiny. Yeah, like your destiny <laughs> is to save the fucking solar system. You have no idea what the fuck your destiny I just, is. So I really like the idea of a guardian like going through all these missions and after each one, like he just gets a pat on the back and then he has to fucking dig out his trading cards to wonder like <laughs> what's happening. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's mad, and the worst thing is you have to unlock these cards. So, <laughs> you're, if you don't like do certain things in the game, you're missing vital story. So, if you are interested, you can't just read it online. You have to go through the game and do tasks you have no context for. 
to unlock than to read about it after the fact. Yep, yeah, these cards have no tr um, strategic value by any way. You know, you can't play a, a card game or something and look more items or armor or anything like that. You it's can't just, even trade it, them with each other. Exactly, it's just cards <laughs> that you read. That is it. That is and the thing it. is, if you read the cards, there's some really interesting like conspiracy theories about the na the true nature of the traveler and. And the fact that the story you get fed at the beginning of the game might not be actually what happened. and But it, who gives a fuck? Because it doesn't impact on anything. There's no there's no closure to the story. There's not any real context to it. I mean, the, the, the basic the story is you, you basically go around the solar system. You go to uh, old Russia, which was seen in its entirety in the beta. You've got the moon, which is actually pretty cool, uh, but it's the smallest area. Um, you've got Venus and Mars... And then, an area, and then an area that you get to visit once in a cutscene called the Reef. Um, and I have to admit, the mean Venus and Mars are probably the best looking. They, they, they are. Really well imagined, wrong. really they are spectacular fucking good. looking. Um, I don't get bored of going there and kind of doing the side missions and stuff. It really is kind of really good looking. Yeah. It's, uh, it, yeah, you're right. The, the settings are fantastically realized. I mean, I say Old Russia is like, you know, we saw it in its entirety in the beta. It's still a really well developed and quite. I think all oh, Russia is possibly one of the biggest areas. It's got a lot of nooks and crannies is, yeah. to explore. It's um, definitely bigger than Venus on my exploration. Yeah, Mars is pretty big as well because it's got a whole underground subway system that not many people seem to know about outside of the missions that are set there. Um, but the, I mean, the levels are extensive, but they're not Skyrim big, and it kind of feels like Destiny needed that size to do like to really. Fill up on the promises that we were given. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, you, a bit you empty you, as well, not just not big. You were led to believe that you'd be this planet hopping kind of next gen hero, and part of that's right. You do go planet hopping, but the levels themselves. I think you said this, Ben, in game is they just feel like really, really large kind of maps. Uh, yeah, like the, I mean, really, the, the, almost like a large scale kind of Battlefield sixty four player map. Like you can it just see. It does actually. That's a good comparison because they have like. They have really forced borders on them, yep. and there's, there's often like you'd, you'll, you'll delve into these kind of hidden bunkers, and you think, "Fucking hell, I've never been here before." And you'll come across enemies that are way higher level than the ones up on the surface, and you think, "Fuck me, what have I stumbled upon?" And then you'll kill them all, and then you'll hit a brick wall, and there'll be nowhere to go. And you think, "Well, there's nothing down here. There's not even a chest." Yep. And you, you can't help but wonder: Was there something down here? Is that why there's a higher level enemies guarding it? I mean, one thing that came out of the uh, the beta, I never saw it myself, but there's a couple of areas in Old Russia that are actually still on the Indian map, uh, King's Watch and Seraphim Vault and other things like that. They're called. Mm -hmm. They aren't in the game. Well, they are in the game, but they're locked off. And in the beta, you could glitch to get into them. And one of the areas had a, like a, a a load of enemies in it, and a, even a, a kind of fully functioning mini boss. So it's obviously that they intend us to go there at some point. Yeah, but whether they're not finished or whether they're holding them back for DLC, uh, you know, it, who knows? But there's, there's a bigger plan for Destiny, and you yeah. can sell because they're releasing stuff like new stuff every week, and there's DLC, there's season passes available. Just the core game itself right now isn't kind of anything like the hive would have let you believe. Yeah, with, you know what the thing is? We, I mean, we keep saying it before. the The core gameplay is, I think, it's, it's superb. Spot on. I think that, the, the the combat the combat's tight and interesting and fun the um the world the like the, the world itself feels very very realized and and the art style is fantastic and i think all the alien factions are, are very distinct and they all have their own distinct feel um even if they are even if their introductions are a little bit flat once you get to know fighting them they all play differently like you've got the uh, the fallen are kind of like the the vanilla enemies you've got the the hive who are these kind of enemies that just swarm you with brute force um, you've got the Cabal, who are like a regimented, hardcore military faction. And then you've got the Vex, who are just a right, right bunch of bastards, really. Time-traveling yeah. um, robots. Time-traveling robots that like to spawn in in giant like squares and just <laughs> march on you relentlessly, and you can't do anything to stop them. And, you know, it, it's cool. There's some really good enemies and some really good worlds. There's, there's not much context to it all. And the core combat's interesting. It plays a bit like... It plays a, a very much like Halo, uh, but with a few kind of more modern twists thrown in like so like iron sight is now in there you've got a um, mass effect style powers to go with the class system um i was actually going to say like in terms of the the thinness script over the whole game it reminds me of the mass effect 3 ending and the public outcry at that because 
there was just not much context there, and then eventually they fleshed it out for us. And but the thing is, that was the ending. This just permeates the whole game. It's, yes, it's that what, much yeah. worse. Uh, exactly. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you, yeah, the core gameplay is superb, and I, I'm having fucking blast playing it, especially when we like all of us get together. Yeah, it's be- so much more fun in a big group, and yeah. when you get under the crucible and you're playing multiplayer, like we had a full team of six the other day, it was awesome. It was a lot of fucking fun, and I'm having a lot of fun with it, and I think I will be playing the multiplayer and the rest of it for, for quite some time, despite its shortcomings, because it is fun just to kind of sit back with you guys and talk shit and just shoot aliens and it's <laughs> yeah. fun you know and there's not really that much competition in that regard on the ps4 as we, as it stands and you know if as long as you're with friends you can kind of all like bad games are still good with friends that's like uh, that's, that's a kind of maxim that you can go back to and i don't think this is a bad game but it's certainly a lacking game i think with... it's it's a disappointing game i think is probably a better <laughs> word it, if yeah. you take the last trailer that came out, which was the the live action one where they played Immigrant Song by Led Zeppelin over the top of it, yeah, that sums up the game perfectly. It didn't promise anything. It was just like friends <laughs> bantering and shooting aliens. Well, you know what? And... I think I think we were talking about the other day. I think that it would have been a better approach not to have this really thin storyline that feels like it's been cut from a larger, more developed storyline at some point in the past. I think it would have been better just to say, "Look, you're a guardian. This is what ha- this is how the world is. Uh, there's various factions, and they're going to give you missions to do. Go out with your mates and do them." I think, it, like, it would have been a much better approach to, to have a bit more of a freeform story and and just make things yeah. a bit more freeform, not make you go through this this kind of half-assed scripted story. It would have been better just like you know, you know, you're a squadron of guardians. Go out, you know, the the, the Vex are trying to fucking destroy this power plant. Go and save it or whatever. And like, just give you kind of one-shot missions, and it would feel like you're like this kind of superhero going across the galaxy trying to save things. I think that would have been a much better approach. Or, yeah. of course, stick with the original story, which yeah, looked if you're a gonna lot cut more things, out. like at least give it like the structure that it deserves to cut things. Because yeah. we were just left with like skin and bones rather than either or what you've just described. Well, yeah, that's it, and it just feels kind of half-assed, really. Um... And it's it's disappointing, you know. It's it's really disappointing. But uh, I think things Destiny does well is the core gameplay is great. I think this game looks very very pretty, um, and it plays really nicely as well. Um, despite it being kind of a cross gen title, I don't think the next gen titles have been held back visually. I think maybe the sk- the scope of it has slightly. Yeah. Not not the quality. Some of the the character models look really good. I mean, when you're doing the the character creation. Uh, the your character model looks really, really detailed and cool. Um, but even then, the character creation kind of <laughs> feels half arsed I mean, you, for, for Bungie, uh, as a developer, they have more beards than yeah. many other. They, they, they're a very heavily beard, bearded development staff, and you can't have beards in this game. And that's just fucking I really ridiculous. wanted to have a massive beard. I wanted a fucking huge beard, and I couldn't do that. You've got to be clean shaven. And everything just feels kind of undercooked. There's, there's, there's three races. Um, there's human, awoken, and exo, and to be honest, the awoken are a cheat. They're just basically kind of purple-skinned, pink-skinned humans with glowy eyes. Only the exo are different in that they're robots. And I gotta say, the exo look badass. The yeah. exo are fucking cool. I mean, when you see the NPCs talk, they kind of like light up with their mouths and open and stuff like that. It's it's, it's pretty cool. There's a lot of work going into the exos. Yeah, I, the I, exos I really like the exos. And uh, I love the EXO dance, because like, yeah. in a lot of MMOs, you have emotes tied to the D-pad, and one of them is a dance, and the, and the EXO is do the robot, and it's fucking class. The robots do the robot, it's fucking awesome. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's great, I love that. Um, so, the, yeah, the, I mean, the character models are great, but again, you know, the character creation is very limited, uh, there's not many kind of options, there's only what, like, you can't really tweak faces, you've got to pick from, like, one of, like, eight presets faces. And it's not really that important, I suppose, because in the end of the day, everyone... It's a first-person game, so you rarely see your character. Um, when you go into the, the tower, which is kind of the social hub where it's in a third-person game, kind of plays a bit like Mass Effect 3 when you're on the Citadel. You, you're in third-person, can see your character, and you don't have a helmet on so you can see the face. But to be honest, it almost feels like they either should have done more with the character creation or just kept everyone's helmets on in the tower. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's strange. It's... When you go on planets, your helmet's on, and all the cutscenes, your helmets are on. It's just, there's no way around it. 
Yeah, there's um, no option like yes, yeah, so like take World of Warcraft for example. There's an option to toggle capes and helmets, and there's nothing like that in Destiny. So you're always wearing a helmet. I think with the um, <laughs> going in outer space, I think even if this sci-fi fantasy universe, it's a bit too much to assume people can breathe in uh, outer <laughs> space. But I mean, it does kind of say that some of these planets were terraformed, and you think, well, surely we can kind of have some kind of life on there but i mean some organic life like the uh, cabal and the uh, fallen wear helmets as well so you can kind of assume it's not just kind of you you're not the only one in that boat yeah yeah that, that's true um i mean that, um, that, um, it's not really a complaint just because i like you know that I, I don't mind wearing a helmet it just feels like the, the character christian's a bit half-assed but uh yeah <laughs> feels like we're being very negative with destiny i will say that i am now on um over two days played on destiny so I've been hitting this fucking hard. It's yeah. been, what, two, I, three weeks? I'll be honest with you, all, as much as we're slaying it, I haven't fucking put it down. It's just really addictive. It's really fun. And as you say, I, I love just coming on and yelling to you guys on the PlayStation chat, you know, hey, are we up for a strike? Yeah, let's get a strike going. And, we... and I, I think we've been fortunate in that um, we, I think we are in the best position possible to enjoy Destiny because I'm going to come on to another shortcoming. <laughs> all right. Well, we have a group of, I would say between all of us, we probably have a, like a network of about 10 people who we can just sit, or yeah. sit down with and play. Yeah, that's fair. Um, and you can only have, when you're doing PvE content, so basically story or, or dungeons or strikes as they call it, raids, you can only have between three and six people in a team. And when you're doing Crucible, which is the PvP, the multiplayer, uh, you can have six people in your team. So the teams aren't massive. So I think at any given time, we can generally field a full team for either PvE or PvP content. And we just sit down, have a laugh with friends, don't take it too too seriously unless it's a fucking hardcore strike. Um, <laughs> yep. And we just have fun with it. Now, if you are somebody who wants to play this game and doesn't have any friends on your chosen console, you're fucked because this game does not do matchmaking well. And it's baffling why it doesn't because you can't get matchmaking for any of the story missions. You can't get matchmaking for any of the strikes as you're leveling up. You can't get matchmaking for the raid. And uh, the, the, the I suppose the big kicker is you can't voice chat with anybody unless they are invited to your fire team, your, your party, in-game party. So you've got to go out your fucking way to get acquaintances and friends in order to play the content. The only time matchmaking ever gets used is... In multiplayer, thank fuck. <laughs> and uh, as when you hit level 18, the strikes playlists open up, which are essentially where you get matchmade with other people who want to do strikes, which are the dungeons. And basically, you just chain one after the other matchmaking dungeons. And they come in four varieties, catering for a level 18, 20, 22, and 24, getting harder with greater rewards as you go up the chain. But, correct me if I'm wrong, but other than that, there ain't no matchmaking. So you can do strikes when you get to late levels, and you can do multiplayer. With no, I think you're right. Why the fuck can you not match me on everything? Ask uh, Destiny. On this day uh, and age, on this platform. Well, the thing is, they show that every game mode is capable of it. Yeah. They, they, have, they have this idea that when you get to that level, you've made friends along the way. Well, you know what? And I'd agree with that and philosophy. That's your, and that's your wolf pack, and that's who you stay with, but... The internet is full of very weird and scary people, and that isn't always the case. Well, you know what? I'd agree with their philosophy if voice chat was in the game, but <laughs> it's not by and large. You've got to literally have people accept invites. The amount of random invites I've gotten just by walking through the tower because people are desperate just to fucking play with somebody is unreal. They're just I... desperate to talk to somebody. Exactly. I mean, there's Apart no reason. <laughs> yeah. There's no reason why. We shouldn't have proximity chat in the tower. There's no reason why we couldn't have proximity chat in when you're doing the free roam in the various zones. Um, there's absolutely no excuse why you can't talk to your own team in Crucible. <laughs> that's, I mean, that's just fucking mind blowing. That they took <laughs> off. What was the last game? The last game that came out where you couldn't chat to your own team? Halo yeah. One, which didn't have online play. <laughs> It's it's mind boggling that they they decided to in order to protect people in inverted courts they turned off voice chat between a, a team in a competitive environment. It's <laughs> it, it's fuck. This is Bungie as well. The people who popularized console first person shooters online. 
Like, Halo 2 is what ushered in Xbox Live into the mainstream. Yeah. And they fucked that up so badly. <laughs> it's unreal how they just... Uh, and the thing is, that I think they're acknowledging that now because they're, they're coming out... I mean, you mentioned it before, Cash. They're, they're coming out with patches yep. every fucking week to address issues. And that's good. And uh, but I think that comes... Uh, that actually links in with my main gripe with Destiny. At its core, I'm having a really fucking good time hanging out with you guys, playing Destiny. It's I've gotten I've gotten way I bought the uh, the this collector's edition so I got the the seventy five pound version which comes with the season pass and loads of other shit goodies I'm never going to look at again, um, and even at seventy five quid I think I've got my money's worth already I've played the shit out of this game, I mean it's been it's been out three weeks and I've been working the, those three weeks more or less and I've still got over two days clocked on this game it's fucking obscene quite frankly, and I'm I'm enjoying the shit out of it but. My biggest gripe is that Bungie have said this is going to be a, like this is going to last ten years, but they've never really communicated what their long term plans are with it. Are we getting expansion packs? Are we getting free patches? Are we getting sequels like normal, and our characters just carry over into the sequels, a la Mass Effect? Um, they're, they're just fucking silent on what's coming. Other than we're getting two expansion packs, uh, DLC expansion packs in the short term, which are the Dark Below. And the House of Wolves coming out in December and March, April. Um, and after that, the silence, complete fucking silence. And uh, I'd just like to know what the long-term plans are because I think the way, I think if we got a, a, like a, a more fleshed out game, the fact that you have to pay for the the Dark Blow and the House of Wolves would sit better with me. But at the moment, it feels like you're going to need to buy both of those just to get the complete game in its like first iteration. Yes, yeah. and I don't think even I don't think two expansion packs are going to bring it up to the level I thought it would be. No, and have you not seen today? There was a leak. Somebody managed to hack the disc and actually find a load of information about the expansion pack. Yeah, I, I, pretty uh, much on disc already. I've seen that. Really? Yep. Um, I don't, um, to be honest, I'm quite looking forward to them, but. They're not as extensive as I was hoping. There's something like... Um, I mean, the good points about them, each expansion pack apparently brings four new Crucible matches, uh, maps sorry, and a couple of new game types. So that, that's quite good. That's quite, a, um, quite an expansion on the amount of maps available in the Crucible each time. Um, but I think after that, you maybe get two to three story missions, a strike, and an extra raid and I think you know great an extra raid but strikes there should really be two yeah I agree um yeah I, I don't know man it's it just feels like the, maybe Activision came in and decided to dice it up to in, in order to sell it back to us at a, at a premium later on um who knows who knows I mean I don't lay, I wouldn't lay this all at Activision's feet because Bungie have fucked up in the past um, and this might be another one of those cases, quite frankly. But uh, I mean, at its core, I'm having a really good good time with this game. And I'd, I'd say if anybody is out there with a group of friends who want a want a decent shooter, um, that might get better as time goes on. Yeah. Then you probably won't go too far wrong with Destiny. I mean, there's a lot to like here. It's just it's it's wider game. It's meta game is a bit fucking all over the place at the moment. <laughs> it's getting patched. It's getting better every week. Um, and I think there is a, a lot to do, well, there's a lot to do in terms of like longevity if you don't mind uh, grinding typical MMO grinds, or if you, you enjoy the strikes, um, there's, you know, you, there's a lot of replay value in them, and if you're up for doing the raid content, if you can get a group of six people together, because uh, again, there's no fucking matchmaking, I think the raid content, we haven't done it yet, but we're gearing up to start soon. It's one of those games, strangely enough, you can just even though it's kind of this share world shooter and online thing, and one of the connotations with uh, an online, especially MMOs, is you kind of have to get on, you have to do really hardcore grinding, but you could pick it up, do maybe a half an hour to an hour, and you, you could quite clearly have something that will level you up quite high or get a new weapon that will last you for kind of, you know, weeks and weeks on end. Yeah. There isn't any of this. I mean, they say they're going to be fixing the loot, and I can see why, because there's been some people who have been uh, really grinding hardcore and haven't had much reward. Uh, it's too random at the moment. It is. It really is random at the moment. I think the the world's first level thirty hasn't put half as much time as someone like the hardcore kind of people who've been playing it day in day out. Well, you and know, it's, um, it's just been dead lucky. 
a great example of its randomness is when we were playing the other day, uh, a friend of ours came bottom. We played multiplayer, and he came bottom of the scoreboard. I, I don't mean just bottom in our team. He came bottom of the whole fucking scoreboard. And he was awarded with an exotic sniper rifle. Now, exotics are the best quality end what game. The well, they're not the best quality, but they're kind of the unique special ability weapons that you know are, are kind of coveted prizes in destiny and he got awarded a sniper rifle version of it for doing the worst in the game and i you know what i came second or top i can't quite remember i got dick i got nothing <laughs> <laughs> i never get anything from the crucible i think the best thing i got is a, an armor die <laughs> <laughs> i think i was with you when that happened i know we've done crucible maybe once or twice and i just yeah i just couldn't fucking believe it man so it's too fucking random um, it's like, it's almost like pity drops are more common than earned drops. <laughs> Look at this poor guy. He's really shit. Let's give him an epic fucking snap. <laughs> uh, yeah, and there's, uh, you know, it, one thing that bugs me as well is that um, bosses don't have loot tables. So, like, going back to, say, World of Warcraft, if you do a dungeon, which would be a strike in Destiny, every time you kill a boss, they've got a chance to drop a certain, a certain table of items. Yep. Um, the bosses in Destiny don't. You just you kill them, and then like it's like your dinkle bottle go, well done, and then you move on to the next one. Dinkle there's, not, there's not really much going on, and I think it would be much better if at least the last boss in every strike had a loot table, so you could at least. I think if they, even if they fucking drop something, because they don't always drop something, you may nine times out of ten get um, a little item that you can sell for glimmer, which is like the game's currency. But at the moment, glimmer does fuck all. Besides yeah, grit. once you once you've leveled, there's no like you only use glimmer to upgrade your armor at high levels. But yeah. you've got so much, you never have like a problem with that. Exactly. Um, Plus, how are you gonna fucking upgrade the armor if you can't even get it in the first fucking place? <laughs> um, but I mean, the only time I really used glimmer though was when I was leveling up. I would buy new weapons every couple of levels. Yeah. If if they didn't drop. I'm like I never. Whenever I look at the weapons now, I'm always just beyond. Like I've already got beyond what he's selling. Yeah, I mean, that guy, the, the weapons vendor in the tower is very much a, a, a guy you need to use for leveling up. He's not an endgame guy, which is fine. I, you know, I don't think people should be able to just buy it for Glimmer because, let's yeah. face it, if they could, we'd all be sitting on, like, purples. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah that they, is you know, true. Reared ready without any effort whatsoever. Um, but, I mean, there's a lot of kind of things in the tower in the town. There's, like, there's the gunsmith. There's um, a guy called the Cryptarch. Now, you get these things called engrams, which are essentially kind of... They're like loot bags. You don't quite know what you're going to get from them. And you hand them into him, and he decodes them, and you get an item. And he's they come in various... motherfucker. I'm sorry. I just yeah, well... I think he's pocketing purples for himself. Well, that's it. If you get a, if you get a legendary engram, which is the purple quality, which is basically the, the best quality, other than the exotics, which are unique... Um, the chances are, if you hand it to him, you'll get a blue quality item out of it, which is the, the tier below. And uh, it's not very very good, because purple engrams are incredibly fucking rare. <laughs> Although, saying that, the, the new patch drops, uh, it's either dropped today or drops tomorrow, and now you will always get a purple item out of a purple engram. Yeah. So, it is changing. It's another example of Bungie are trying to fix things. Um... It's almost like it's too little too late, though. I'm sure some of the people that have bought the game on day one found its flaws and are probably never going to go back and have sold the game off again. I well, think that's probably true, but like with me, I know that I'm I'm pretty much Bungie's target audience. Like, <laughs> well, I'm not sure I'm the target audience anymore. Maybe I've shifted, but I'm sort of Bungie elite, and I'm going to hang on to this until you know, it better out. Well, I've got the season pass, so I'm hanging yeah. on to it till at least, like, April. <laughs> well, if you guys are playing, I'm definitely playing. <laughs> but that's the kind of mentality these are banging on. Mind, what I will say is that they're going to have to do some serious work on this game and yeah. maybe offer a lot more freebies than they ever intended, intended to. Otherwise, Destiny 2 might not be quite the success they hope it would. Yeah. Um, or whatever they want to do with it, but... You know, this game we've got mixed reviews from the mainstream media. Yeah, it's got Metacritic. It's just, it's like a fucking roller coaster. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and you know what? I, I even like, even though I, I, I'm, I'm generally positive about it. I'm really enjoying it, and I find myself playing a lot. And when I'm not playing it, I find myself thinking about it a lot. I mean, yeah. um, I'm looking Friday, at the time and planning which bounties I'm going to take when I get home. And 
Yeah, and I mean, I uh, last Friday, like every every Friday, this 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 mysterious character turns up in the tower, and you can buy exotic uh, armor from him. What you buying? He kind of is like the Resident Evil Four shop guy, but he's like a sci-fi version. Of him. <laughs> and uh, on Friday, I had enough, like I had enough of the currency to buy an exotic, and I was excited. Like I was literally browsing the internet while I was at work, trying to find out if anyone found out what he was selling this week. Uh, and I, I find myself just excited about the game generally, and I think about it a lot when I'm not playing it. And yeah. it, that, that's why it makes it worse when you realise how fucking underdeveloped it is in many areas. It's almost like when we get frustrated at some of these awful things, while we're playing it, it we always like laugh it off. Like, how many times during a night do you say, oh, for fuck's sake, Bungie? And it's always like <laughs> it's like, air of like, like comedy almost. Yeah, it has almost become a joke in itself, really. Um, usually, when you you go to the engram guy, <laughs> the cryptarch, uh, I, I think a, a long running joke with us is kind of like, "Oh, I wonder what I'm going to get from this engram." I think it's going to be disappointment. Yeah, <laughs> and it probably is. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's Destiny's just a disappointing game. Uh, it's a, it, I think under the surface, or it has the potential to be a, a good game. It's just a very disappointing game, and I expected more from Bungie. I expected more from Activision, given you know, giving them this creative freedom, apparently. And the fucking, I'm disappointed because of the money that was thrown at this franchise. I mean, it's obviously a very expensive game. I mean, if you look at the sky boxes in this game and the production values, the sky boxes are off the fucking chart. They're absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, and, and yeah. Like, it all works, because I know that um, FIFA 15 came out last week, which is a fucking football game, and they've had server issues since it launched. Oh, that's a, no, that's a good point. This game has not had a blip. No. It's... Well, it actually it got taken down for a few hours yesterday because it was hacked, and yep. so that's it. That's the only thing that's brought it down. Oh, really? I didn't know that. Yep, yeah, there was a hack. It called the Call of Duty servers and the Bungie servers got taken down. Oh, uh, really? I've been kicked off once or twice, and I'm pretty sure it's not my internet, but it's I've, I've normally been able to get right back sure on. It's, it's, it's never and been... Compared to, yeah, compared to like how much I've been playing, it's fucking minimal, absolute minimal. There's never been any, what I would say, downtime. As you say, you occasionally get disconnected. Sometimes when you log on, you get a message saying the, the world's about to restart, so you might get disconnected. Um, so I think it's in my experience it's largely been down to maintenance or something like that. Uh, but it's minimal. There's been certainly I've never had any. I've never been able to not log into the game since it launched. Um, no, um, which I had know. some trouble tonight. But again, it's probably my internet. <laughs> <laughs> possibly, possibly. I, mean, I just, just mentioned as well though that this has caused me to break a controller. This game. It's the first time I've ever done this. <laughs> yeah, you. Uh, the trigger went, didn't it? Yeah, I was. I've been using the hand cannon, so I've been pulling it continuously. <laughs> um, oh, yeah, I actually remember a... though. I've, I've, I got the original. I got the Halo Three Xbox when it came out, and I've got. I've still got the green controller. I'm looking at it now. Um, I broke the thumbstick on that from playing Halo Three too much. So really, Bungie, Bungie have a track record with me. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, but uh, yeah, I think you know what this compares very nicely to the initial release of Diablo Three. In that the the core gameplay is great, it's just the surrounding meta game that is lacking. Yeah, and, I and just Destiny hope... sorted itself out. So, I mean, yeah. um, Diablo Three sorted itself out. Yeah, I just hope Bungie can pull a Reaper of Souls and 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 fix Destiny because the thing is all the all the things that are wrong with it, or the majority of things that are wrong with it, can be fixed with patches. Yeah. Which is going to be frustrating when they don't fix it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I just really hope they, they pull a, a blizzard and fix this shit. Because... This is a great world, and I want to see more of it. I want it to be... I, I, it deserves better. Yeah. There's something, there's something potentially really good, like something great lur lurking underneath, but as it stands, there's just too many fuck-ups... And too many idiotic decisions and, and obscure design choices to 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 really praise it all that much. Um, so I suppose, yeah, I suppose with that in mind, do you want to, do you want to go move on to ratings? Yeah. Um, do you guys want to go first? I think I've got. I think I've settled on my my rating. I'll go. I'll no. go B minus. I think. I'll say solid B. Um, I you know I'm gonna go fucking well. As soon as we're doing stars nowadays, I'm gonna give it three stars. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, three stars. stars. Three stars. That translates to three stars, surely. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give it three stars. I think that this... 
I think I'm having. I think for me personally, this is probably a four star game, but I think it's purely down to having you guys to play with. Yeah. I think if you bought this on your own and played it, you know, as somebody who expects to go into an online game and be able to play it functionally, you I'll can't. definitely say it's a three star game, but maybe we've had a four star experience. If that's what you're uh, getting at. Yeah, yeah, I, I would say that, and I think with patching, yeah, that might even out a little bit, but. You know, th- this is the type of game is I'd l- be quite interested in coming back and re- re-reviewing it in a year's time. Yeah, we should definitely do that. Uh, just seeing what the first year does to it, because there's many a game these days has been kind of transformed. But maybe it's me just clutching at straws, because I really want this to be better than it is. Um, but a- as it stands, I can't, I can't help but think Destiny's just a three-star game. It's been here a while. Hasn't made a jump in centuries. We're lucky the Fallen haven't completely picked it clean. Will it fly? I can make it work. going to break orbit, and it just might get us to the city. Now, about that trans man. Bringing you in. You can come back for them when you're ready. Let's get you home. 